Uh, things are wonderful. Hello there. Um, I'm here at the, the workshop at, at where all the activities in Hamlet Biopharma is, are coordinated. I think in the background, you can see part of the team with uh, scientists, uh, medical doctors and other specialists that help develop our drugs. Um, I hope you can see that it's a very, very positive and generous environment. So Hamlet Biopharma. Um, Hamlet Biopharma is an innovative pharmaceutical company listed on Spotlight Market uh, in Stockholm. We are developing groundbreaking discoveries from, uh, from our uh, lab and also from contacts uh, throughout the world in two areas, cancer and infection. We built an organization that allows us to take these discoveries all the way from the molecular and genetic level to the clinic. And this is witnessed by our recent clinical update where we presented data of alpha 1H studies and the strong treatment effects against bladder cancer. We have also made a strategic merger to combine the two areas of cancer and infection. And this strategic merger was completed in August of this year. The, the drug development that can be done in this bigger and, and stronger company uh, is explained in part by the broader pro project portfolio. And also importantly, we know that we are reducing the risk for investors because of the multiple and, and very promising projects that we have. The patent portfolio is large, uh, which I think is a complement to us as to our innovative and discovery capacity. We have 15 patent families and 60 individual patents in the company. And the publication track record is very, very strong. We, ra we are ranking in the top 1% worldwide, according to the St Stanford ranking and have published more than 500 papers. So what about the drug development pipeline, the indications and studies? Cancer and infections are our two target areas, of course, addressing huge unmet medical needs in large patient groups. In the middle, we the, the, some keywords are given for cancer and infections, high precision and cancer treatments without side effects and high precision anti-infectives, which help the immune system produce a balanced defense. This high precision is based on our scientific track record and our detailed understanding of these processes. So to the left, the compounds, alpha-1H, which is our lead compound for cancer development and currently in clinical trials for bladder cancer. Uh, a repeat treatment protocol is ongoing to define uh, phase three study protocols. An IL-1 receptor antagonist that we are testing in phase two for two indications, bladder pain and recurrent cystitis. Successful treatment of bladder pain has already been noticed in a, and a, an ongoing placebo controlled trial is conducted to quantify this effect. We also have IL-1-RA treatment investigated in a phase two trial of patients with recurrent cystitis. And finally, our rich pipeline of cancer and infection products supported by publications in leading international journals and where all of the projects have animal data showing therapeutic efficacy. And with time, we hope to develop this pipeline further. So drug development, leveraging groundbreaking IP for several projects and clinical strategy to commercialize the drug portfolio. First, something about alpha-1H and the treatment of bladder cancer. To the right, you see bladder cancer tissue, and the purple color is, is tissue that has taken up our drug, alpha-1H, in patients with this problem. Within the dotted line, I think you can see the breakdown of the cancer tissue into single cells. And these cells are actually excreted very rapidly by the patient, reducing the tumor size. Why bladder cancer? It's a huge unmet medical need, one of the most common cancer forms, the most expensive cancer indication in the US, and very difficult to treat. More than 80% of patients with early bladder cancer recur after complete what is perceived as complete surgical removal. When I say few efficient treatments, there is a lot of work ongoing, mainly focusing on late disease 
And as I'll come back to, we are focusing on the early parts of valley cancer development. It's also, of course, a huge and growing market. So the, the anti-cancer discovery of the Hamnet molecule has then been developed further to use the Alpha-1A, a second generation synthetic variant of Hamnet, which is now in clinical trials. Alpha-1 has successfully passed the placebo-controlled phase 1-2 part of the study, and we have also uh, performed dose escalation studies. And I'd like for you to focus on the red text here under clinical results, because a combined analysis of the placebo control part on the dose escalation part has revealed that we see an 82% reduction in tumor size of tumors treated with our higher dose that we are now continuing with in the clinical trials. We have also received FDA clearance first of our IND, the basic portfolio, and recently received fast track status for alpha-1H in bad cancer. And we are continuing the clinical trials and dialogue with the FDA. The company's strategy now, because of, of, of these successful steps that have been taken, our, our strategy is to um, develop partners that can help us take this, uh, this project on towards phase three, through phase three and to the market. Just a few pieces of data from the clinical trial. The purple is the increase in effect seen by the reduction in tumor size. The red is the uptake of the drug by the tumor, which occurs very, very rapidly, unlike many anti-cancer drugs where delivery is a problem. And cell death, the green, which happens by apoptosis rather than by the more toxic forms of cell death. So as I said, the current stage past the part one and part two, and we are now in a repeat, repeated treatment protocol, which is ongoing. So the future strategy for Alpha-1H is, of course, to take Alpha-1H to phase three trials, to find a suitable commercial partner and seek market approval. We also have to think about and emphasize what is in the pipeline which is the use of Alpha-1H for the treatment of additional cancer indications. And last week, we, we made a press release about our, our advances in terms of treating brain tumors with this drug. There are also new substances and new indications possible in the future. Now to the, the second half of our activities, which is the treatment of infections and the development of, of alternatives to antibiotics, which all of you know is so crucial. Killing the bacteria is not enough. We are developing immunotherapy for bacterial infections, and a lead compound is an IL-1 receptor antagonist, and the two indications are bladder pain syndrome and recurrent acute cystitis. A very brief summary here, overview of the work. Uh, IL-1-RA is in phase two clinical trials for two indications, bladder pain syndrome and recurrent acute cystitis. And we believe that there would be a very straightforward regulatory process because IL-1-RA is already a drug that has been granted for other clinical indications than, than infection. And Hamlet Pharma has patented this substance for our specific indications. So bladder pain is affecting about 1% of the global population, and it's a, a disease that is very severe where there are very few alternative treatments. Recurrent acute cystitis, of course, is one of the most common infections in the world. Every second woman has an, an episode of cystitis during her lifetime, and recurrences develop in about 30% of, of those women. Uh, there is a huge unmet medical need as well in this, as antibiotic resistance is, is increasing very rapidly. Just one data slide from the clinical study of patients with bladder pain syndrome. If you look to the right here, the, the treatment with IL-1-RA was successful. The patients experienced relief from severe symptoms, increased quality of life, and we made laboratory investigations confirming the change in pain response. You can see an overview of, 
of the data here. To the left, you see a nerve cell. And what's crucial here is that the infection attacks the nerve cell and pain is generated. So what we do now is to treat with antibiotics, which is partially efficient. But our IL-1-RA, our immune inhibitor, is just as efficient in terms of inhibiting the pain. Future strategy for IL-1-RA, uh, as this is an approved drug with a new indication, we believe that the, the process to uh, seeking market approval is going to be more rapid once the clinical data is, is, is there. And also, of course, there is a rich pipeline of substances that we have developed that we may, may use in the future. I won't go over all these different um, substances or the different projects because of time, obviously, but I want you to see the list to make sure that you appreciate that there is a lot of discovery here that could be developed into very efficient drugs in the future. Finally, um, on Thursday, uh, we have um, a General Assembly meeting which has been assembled in order to address the proposal of uh, continued financing. Uh, and provided that this will be accepted, our plan is a rights issue consisting of about 72 million B shares, subscription price 1.12 subscription period January 24 to February 7. We're aiming to raise about 40 million before transaction costs and Hamlet has secured pre-underwriting of about 13 million so far from a group of, of uh, existing shareholders as well as new investors. We're very happy to um, respond to your questions if you would like more detail regarding this part of the presentation. So thank you very much for listening. Uh, thank you, Katarina. Uh, very interesting. Um, uh, but just to, to help the, um, uh, the the future shareholder, because I know that your existing shareholders have also have already proven that they have the skin in the game here uh, and and uh, made their guarantees. But a, a, a future shareholder. Uh, who do you compete with? Who, who do you meet in the door uh, 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 when you're marketing your efforts here? Actually, I'm sort of circumventing your question here by, uh, by saying that um, there is from Linane Pharma, who is the, the major shareholder presently in the company, uh, there are rights available for, for individuals who are not current, current shareholders, but who wish to participate um, in the fundraising. And they can contact Linane Pharma directly mm -hmm. uh, to discuss the practicalities. So who are we meeting in the door? In terms of bladder cancer, uh, early bladder cancer development. I didn't emphasize that because of time, but what we are looking at is patients with newly diagnosed bladder cancer who can benefit from several aspects of the mechanism of action of alpha-1. One is the efficacy against the tumor that I think I showed you. The second is its lack of toxicity because this, um, this compound has so far not shown significant toxicity in, in any of the clinical studies. And therefore, it, it's a part of the market that is not currently very crowded with other drugs. Newly diagnosed patients usually wait for surgery rather than being treated with, uh, with intravesical treatment. Uh, so, so we think there, that's a very large and very interesting part of the bladder cancer market. And if we look at the news flow, that's been um, very positive, I must say, um, uh, with, within a couple of weeks, actually. Uh, you, you mentioned the fast track uh, designation from the FDA. So uh, in a more uh, co concrete way, what does that mean for you uh, regarding, for instance, time to market? Or, or uh, would you be able to put a value on, on, um, uh, uh, on the fast track designation? I think it, not a value as such in terms of, of uh, crowns or, or dollars. The value here is that we get guidance to take the shortest way to the phase three trials that we very much want to initiate as soon as possible. And with that, uh, 
comes the potential for market approval. So these two are these two are linked. With the FDA on our side, it's a completely different scenario compared to you know sitting in your company locally and trying to guess what they will accept or not. So, so this is very much a hands-on solution to our development, and I think it's fantastic. It's really something that uh, gives us a gold star compared to to many companies uh, who, who would, you know, there are many companies who would like to be in that position. And uh, um, if we look at uh, another um, uh, press release here, uh, Neurochase uh, has, has formed some sort of agreement with you, but they are referring to uh, brain tumors here. Could you just uh, elaborate a little bit of that? Yes. I mean, the, this, this intense news flow is because we do a lot. We have a lot of results, and I think it will be obvious over the next months that, that there is a lot more where this comes from because the, we have a very active network of, of collaborations with leading international centers and also uh, the, the discovery part is, is very active for the different projects, you know, many projects and, and many possibilities. Uh, NeuroChase was really founded by Professor Gill in Bristol, who is a world expert in how to deliver drugs into the brain. Uh, he's a pediatric neurosurgeon. He's, his quest has been to help children with what's called pontine gliomas, which are the most difficult to treat, I think, one of the most difficult to treat brain tumors. And, and he has been looking at technologies to put catheters into the brain exactly at the, at the place where the tumor is. You, you can't really treat by adding drugs to the bloodstream because the blood-brain barrier is preventing, often preventing the drugs from even entering the brain and especially reaching exactly where the tumor site is. So we are working with them on a, a new type of technology that would allow us to infuse alpha-1H into specific areas, either of the brain or where the cerebral spinal fluid is, and, and, and look at initially, of course, in large animals and then hopefully in patients, uh, how this works. Uh, all right, I interesting. Um, and uh, if we look at where you are uh, on the stage uh, here, uh, how do you keep uh, the staff and how do you attract uh, key staff? Maybe we should ask them. <laughs> they're, they're right here. <laughs> I, I think we, we have a policy uh, that is based on the person doing the discovery being able to develop their own findings uh, all the way from uh, from theory into the clinic. And I think that's something that attracts many scientists, you know, rather than going from project to project, they, they take the discovery, they get patent rights, and they can also, through our technology platform, they can be part of developing it all the way to the clinic and see patients being treated with their, with their, uh, with the drug that they have discovered. So um, they are, it's a fantastic team. And also, I must say, our we have a broad network, as I said, of, of uh, experts, you know, production expertise, patent expertise, clinical expertise. I mean, all these main areas are persons who are committed and very tightly linked with us. And we are really grateful to Thank them for being there. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, very interesting. You seem uh, like you have your uh, house in order. So what would be the next news flow here? You, I know you, you have your next report on the 22nd of February, but uh, will there be uh, news ahead of that from you? Yes, I, we, we anticipate that we will have uh, news coming out virtually every week now for the next months. But there is a lot to, to, uh, to communicate about what's going on. Excellent. Interesting. So, Katarina, the, the, uh, the message would be um, subscribe and watch this uh, space, I take it. I, I hope so. You, you said it. We, we can talk about it after Thursday, can't we? Excellent. But well, we wish you the best.